Gotcha. Cool. Cool. Awesome. Um, and Hannibal, did you write anything? Uh, do you have anything that you want to uh, specifically look for besides what you've been looking for, what I described earlier? Okay, great. Um, let me do something real quick. Um, so, Vi, what are you doing? Um, I think that Vi would have shadowed the rest of the group into the inn. As you do. Like I do. And, uh, the second she heard that there was a noble staying at the inn, <laughs> since that is her specialty, breaking into the rooms of nobles. <laughs> so glad to help. Um, I think that she would, uh, make her way upstairs and try to figure out uh, exactly who this individual is. So yeah, so you, you head upstairs to the inn. Um, this is actually a three-story inn, because uh, it is a larger, it needs to it needs to have the ability to hold a bunch of different people. Uh, I assume Hannibal will be back in just a second. Um, it needs to have the ability to hold like a bunch of people who are trading here. Um, so you head up to the second floor, and there's, not, there's clearly like nothing conspicuous. Um, some of the doors are open. The doors that are open are clearly like unoccupied rooms. Um, mm -hmm. And you head up to the third floor, uh, and I think it's it's very clear that the room at the very end of the hall uh, is has two guards just standing outside of it. And there's no doubt in anyone's mind that that is clearly <laughs> where said noble is staying, right? Yeah, Vi rolls her eyes at how conspicuous they are, but... Uh... <laughs> right, yeah, they're, they're not trying to hide the presence, they're just trying to hide who it is, right? Like, that's it's clear that whoever it is is what is being hidden from from everything. Sure. So based on where she sees that this room is, could she tell if there is a window or a balcony that goes to that particular I room? I think there is most certainly at least a window. Um, probably okay. not a balcony. This isn't. This is the place that, like I said, is designed to hold a, a decent amount of people, not necessarily hold like people who have a lot of money. I mean, it is a noble, but that's okay. It doesn't. Well, it doesn't have the most lavish rooms. I'm talking about the the inn itself. It doesn't have the most lavish of rooms. It has a lot of rooms instead because sure. it needs to hold uh, a lot of people. Okay. Um, I think that um, Vi would head back outside, so she would go downstairs. Sure. Mental map of where the room was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you can definitely get it. Um, go outside and uh, grappling hook. To where the window is and um, use her thieves tools to break in so and i will make whatever roll you want me to roll <laughs> you're gonna try and grappling hook up there so um how does the grappling hook work let's uh let's look at that real quick so the grappling hook because this is the first time we've used one besides that one that i kind of homebrewed for raka uh wow i turned right to it i'm that good grappling hook uh doo -doo 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 -doo. Where is it? <clears throat> G comes before H, right? Yeah. Hmm. Why does it go from fishing tackle to healer's kit then? I'm very confused. Because well, no. it doesn't have everything. <laughs> okay, problem. cool. Um, so, <laughs> I think that it's going to require... Uh, hmm. This is on the third floor. So it's pretty high up. I think it will require a strength, uh, strength check, an athletics check, not an acrobatics check. If you wanted to just, it, if you wanted to scale, it may be one of those things where it would assist you. Like it might give you advantage on a climb check, perhaps. Um, but it's still okay. the athletics to get up there, so you can use it to give yourself advantage for your your climbing check, basically. So I should roll athletics. Mm -hmm. Okay. A 13 is pretty good. It's not that you're not going to make it up there. It's just going to take a while. Um, like, it'll take a couple of rounds to get up there. But eventually, you do sure. struggle your way up there. Um, you're a little bit winded because uh, it is three stories. <clears throat> it's a fairly high building. Um, okay. <laughs> and I think you get up to, like, the ledge, and you're holding on to, like, the ledge of the window, and you, you peek your head up, and you look, uh, and you can see that uh, there are two individuals inside of the room. Um, there is the, the noble, obviously, uh, but he's dressed as one of the guardsmen, but there's no mistaking his, his stance. 
Um, he's, uh, he's probably about mm, five, 11, six foot. So fairly tall. Uh, he's got a, um, kind of like a, a neatly trimmed full beard. Um, it is, his hair and beard are black. Um, and they have just, uh, just a little bit of gray, uh, kind of mixed in, but not enough to call old. Uh, he's maybe in his late thirties. Um, and, uh, and he's standing there with another individual who is clearly a dwarf. Uh, and the dwarf is got, um, he's bedecked, not as a guardsman, but what appears to be, and you can see maybe sitting, um, sitting against the wall, there is a shield and hammer. Um, that are that he's got the hammer on it, but the shield is like lying up against the wall, uh, and it's got a symbol on it uh, that you do not recognize, uh, or you might if you want to make a roll for it. It'd be a religion check. Sure. Might as well. It's a roll. Mm-hmm. I mean, you don't recognize it, um, and uh, they appear to be having a conversation. Uh, the Lord is like sitting in a chair and the dwarf is standing. So they're kind of at eye level. Um, and, uh, the dwarf is kind of like walking around and he's being a bit animated, but you can't hear, uh, very well what's going on inside the room itself. But, uh, (laughs) jumping in there right now would clearly give away your position. Um, is there a way that I could just like, um, crack open the window just the tiniest bit to try to see if I could hear, if I could use my thieves tools to try to just pop the lock on the window? Sure. Um, I think that, yeah, if you could use uh, Thieves' Tools to pop the lock, um, but uh, you'll need to roll a stealth roll first uh, okay. to see how... Or a stealth roll second. Let's roll your Thieves' Tool first to make sure you can pop it. And uh, I think a failure with the Thieves' Tools may may require some, some other rolling. But, yeah, go ahead. Okay. I don't know how to roll that. Okay. Did you create the... The, I don't uh, think these so. Tools? Okay, uh, that's fine. We can go ahead and do that right now. So on your character sheet, uh, you can click on the custom skills. You see how that brings up those right there? So on the first one, let's just do Thieves Tools. Uh, and then next to it, we're going to make that Dexterity. Uh, and then you're proficient with them, right? Mm-hmm. So there you go. You can go ahead and click Hooray. that button then, and it'll make Thieves Tools roll. Oh, and possibly. everything froze, of course. Good. I'll just put an apostrophe there. Uh, wait. That doesn't look right. It's thieves' tools, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's thieves. <laughs> oh, is it? It is. It's apostrophe yeah. after. Yeah, it's apostrophe ah, after. Ah, that's where I was. Oh God. Yeah. Stop. Stop moving. Because it's thieves, and then. Because <laughs> it's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> no, right. that's it's, English. It's the, it's the double yeah. plural that's getting us there. Uh huh. Interesting. Interesting. It's no. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's, what? It's the possessive plural, right? That's 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 yeah. what's going on. Correct. It okay. is already an S, and it needs to be possessive, so you Got put it. it after. Got it. That's <laughs> dumb. You're welcome, class. Okay. I mean, unless the thief is sharing their tools with other people, technically it's still not thieves' tools. Right, that's what I'm saying. It's 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 a thief's tool. Thief's tool. <laughs> anyway, but that's not how they do. I suppose uh, technically they could be used by anyone. Um, roll stealth. Uh, stealth is going to determine since you succeeded on the roll, you're able to do it. Stealth is going to determine uh, if they notice and how quickly. Okay, mm, my hood would be up. Would that matter for this at all? Um, what does your hood being up do? It's like a to. It's a disadvantage for them to perceive you, right? Yes. Um, yeah, if they, like they're gonna roll a perception check opposed to your stealth roll, so okay. yes, they would get disadvantage. Um, but uh, actually, hold on, it's not perceiving you; it's perceiving the window being open. But I'm the one opening the window. I don't think that works it's, that way. Uh, it's the sound. Yeah. yeah, I don't think it works that way. I think it. I think it's the window being opened. Uh, is what's going to cause them to notice. You know, they may not see you immediately. They may just be like, huh, the breeze blew the window open or something like that. Sure. But it, it may cause them to walk over and inspect. Okay. Quick meow. Mm. Uh, I'm going to use my luck. Okay, roll another d20. Just roll <laughs> d20. Or, yeah, actually, just roll a, just roll a stealth roll Do again. Do you want me to just roll it again? Yeah, just roll a stealth roll again because you got to get okay. your bonus and stuff. Oh, you want to use I'm gonna luck? use it. I'm gonna use it again. Okay. Second <laughs> luck. 
And then we'll see. There we go. At least slightly still better. Not the greatest. Um, all right, so I need to roll. Yeah, but now the window doesn't slam open, and they don't like run over and <laughs> chop my head off. That's actually true. <laughs> uh, so if they beat you, they will notice eventually. How far they beat you by will determine how quickly they notice. If they don't beat you, then you should be fine. Um, D20 they plus. They do have disadvantage, right? Two. No, they do not. Oh right, never mind. We determined that was wrong. First one does not notice you. Second one does not notice you. So you think you've gotten away with it. Um, for a they don't bit. immediately walk over. Right. Yeah, like due to the natural of the con like, certainly, natural of the conversation, yeah. they may eventually look at it, but you'll be able okay. to catch some conversation before that happens, essentially. And I'm not gonna stay here for like an hour. <laughs> so I don't think your arms can hold you for an hour on the window ledge. True. <laughs> um so yeah. So I think that as the window cracks open and, and you know, uh, maybe there's that moment, maybe the luck is, like, um, you feel a breeze blow by your head as you, like, do it, and you're able just with your fingernails to catch the window before it slams open, and you, like, pull it just closed enough so that it doesn't look like <laughs> anything happened. Um, uh -huh. it's, it's one of the, it's a really, really tense moment. Um, and if anybody could see me, I would just look ridiculous, but it's fine. <laughs> right, yeah, 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 but, I mean, no one's really looking up. I mean, no one looks up uh, in, in video games or movies ever, so you're fine. Sure, um, sure. So, yeah, I think you hear the conversation, and we cut in in the middle of it, uh, and the dwarf is talking, and he goes, My lord, we can't do that. If we do that, then there will be rioting in the streets. Um, and uh, and the, you can see the, the noble. He's got, like, a glass in his hand of water, and, uh, and he takes a sip, and he goes... <sighs> We have to. There's no way that we can without it. There's too much risk. We can't allow the. We can't allow it to get out. Uh, and the dwarf goes, "No, you don't understand. It's this should be free for the people to defend themselves with." Uh, and and the Lord kind of looks, and you can tell like it's clear that the the dwarf um, might be being treated as an equal but maybe not have the rank as an equal um like to others perception mm -hmm. uh and, and the noble kind of looks and he um he like he leans over he puts sets his glass down he leans both elbows like on his knees and he's steepled his fingers like kind of underneath um uh, his chin and he goes Cons consider this if we were to allow this to get out what if god forbid the orcs got a hold of it. Could you imagine what they would do with this? We already know that they... They develop technology on their own. They're not quite the savages we expected them to be. And... The Skaven? They have their own ways, but... If they got a hold of this, they could use them both. And... Even worse than that... What if... What if we saw a resurgence from the... The Dark Elves, coming from the mountains, would your people want to fight them with this technology in their hands? No. We must quell it. Uh, and you can see the dwarf kind of gets a little bit frustrated. Um, and he kind of, he walks over and he like picks up his shield and he straps it to his back and he says, We will talk about this again. And he kind of goes out the door and you hear it slam. Uh, and the Lord kind of stands up. Uh, and you can see, like, he was holding himself, like, as a noble, but after the dwarf walks out, you see his shoulders just, like, slump, um, and he, like, pinches the, the bridge of his nose, and he's like, ah, that dwarf will be the end of me. Ugh. I hate all of the secrecy. He's just, like, talking to himself. Um, mm -hmm. and you see him go over, and he, uh, he, like, um, goes over to, like, a pack, and you see him rummaging through it, uh, and he pulls out, like, this device. You've no idea what it is. Um, and he just, like, looks at... He sets it, like, on the bed, and you lose sight of it. Uh, and you see him just, like, looking at it, and he's clearly, like, deep in thought. Um, but it doesn't appear that anything else is going to happen beyond that. Oh, man. All Vi wants to do is steal that device, but she's not that dumb. <laughs> all right. So she makes all the mental notes she can and then slides down and heads back downstairs. 
Um, Chester, what are you doing on the out on the docks? I am passed out. <laughs> Not being able to sleep well on the boat because of all the, you know, sea seasickness. Uh, Chester is a bit exhausted and is asleep. Sure, yeah. And I think that as the night cools, maybe you, uh... Because you, you, you're well-trained at keeping one eye open when you sleep. Um, you notice that, that Clay, the, like, the deckhand, um, he brings, like, a blanket over to you, and he kind of, like, sets it next to you, and then turns around and, and walks away. Uh, just not really saying anything. Do you address him as he does that? Uh, I do not. Okay. I will address him in the morning. Gross. Um... So yeah, he uh, he walks and he gets back on the boat, um, and uh, you you go back to sleep. I think that's. I mean, there's unless you go do anything, I think that no one really bothers you because you're clearly like part of the crew or whatever for this this barge, um, and I don't think anybody else bothers you. I am okay with that. Cool, awesome. All right, so uh, throughout throughout the night. Um, obviously, uh, you're having just a great night. Uh, in fact, you're gonna you're gonna probably make some money. Roll me a uh, roll me a d8 there, Farron. Okay. All the money. Cool. Uh, so I think you make like forty silver and like two gold. Brilliant. <laughs> just based on like your your playing throughout the night. Um, it's been a while. You you can tell it's been a while since these people have had real entertainment, and maybe that maybe that contributes to it to some degree. Um, but you do notice um, generally the people here are uh, they're all fairly reserved. Um, there's not a whole lot of like carousing. Like they're paying you because you're you're doing your job, right? They're not paying you because you are. Um, because they are, like, getting rowdy and just, like, losing their money. They all, like, they'll come up and they'll throw some money at, in, in your hat or whatever you have out or a cup or whatever. Uh, and then they'll go back to their tables and they'll eat. The The atmosphere in the bar is fairly dull. Sure. And even with your with your playing and your, you know, your... I, I assume that generally you play fairly upbeat tempo songs. Um, of course. <laughs> they There's no one getting up and dancing. They're just kind of quietly enjoying the music. And you notice, too, probably, like, those upbeat songs don't get as much, like, head nods as the, like, maybe, like, slower, like, more, more, uh, melodious music. Mm -hmm. So it's, like, it's it's a weird crowd to play to because it's, like, it's obviously lucrative because these people have a decent amount of money because they are, you know, traders and, uh, and carry coin around with them. But, uh, but the atmosphere is not typically what you're used to. Yeah, I think probably in one of my breaks I'd go over to the barkeep and say, "Aye, they're not the most lively a bunch, are they?" <laughs> he uh, he kind of looks at you and he says, "Well, we got different bunches around here. Sometimes they're lively, sometimes they're not. Depends on who's in town." Aye, and who's in town now that'll make them like this? <laughs> he goes. <laughs> He kind of, like, looks around and he says, looks like the regular crew, no one special. I'll leave it at that if you don't want to say. <laughs> yeah, it's clear that he's, like, he said that on purpose, right? Yeah. <laughs> but obviously, Farron's kind of accepting that he's not going to have his pick of women tonight. Yeah, that's probably not true. Most of them here are most likely uh, spoken for. Mm. <laughs> um, so uh, Hannibal and and um, Morella and Petrov, you guys are what are you just sitting at a table, kind of carousing, or do you guys do anything? What do, what are you guys doing? I'll I'll let Jackson type whatever first. Uh, there would be no books, Jackson, uh, purely based on the fact that it only happened ten years ago, and books take a long-ass time to write when all you have is a, a scribe, uh, or all you have is, like, quill, uh, and you have to make multiple copies. There's probably some that are written, but not reproduced ever. 
It only happened You'd ten years dwarves... ago. Mostly stories. You'd think the dwarves would get around to a printing press, but, I mean, I guess the constant threat of chaos invasion. Right. The constant <laughs> battle with the uh, Denzins of the Underdark uh, probably keep them uh, from doing said thing. Um, alright, well, let's actually, I'm actually going to roll something, because I actually have a table for this. <laughs> roll to stop a library. Uh, let's <laughs> see. <laughs> An amazing roll. Oh, wait, that's the wrong book. Hold on, let me grab this book. Let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. so. Ooh, nope, we don't want magical items. That was not a roll for magical items. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Nope, that was not a roll for a ghost ship either. That's later. Uh, okay. So, there is currently, out of all the traders in town, there's currently a tailor, um, a dried meats vendor, a baker, a chandler, and a rope maker. There are no really book salesmen in town that you could uh, you could make contact with. Um, most of that stuff usually is in the larger city libraries. Uh, books are books are quite rare, obviously, in this world. Most of it is done by storytelling, hence you know giving Farron a job. Now, if you wanted to you know go ask Farron about some stories, I guarantee he would know some. How truthful they are is remains to be seen. I mean, well, depends on how well it pays. <laughs> so, yeah, so stories in these days are as truthful as it gets, right? Like, it's actually a mm. skill picking out truth from from embellishment, right? Yeah. But uh, that's that's how word spreads in this world. Like, it's not that there's not communiques, right? There's no cell phone. There's no. Uh, I mean, there's magic, obviously, but to waste magic on trivial things like that is generally looked down upon. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Awesome. Uh, cool. Uh, when are you going to be on voice there, Jackson? Soon? Soon, I hope? I hope it soon is the answer to that. Oh my god, okay. I guess I have to click invisibility. Hold on, guys. <laughs> there we go. There's, there's invisibility, guys. Amazing. <laughs> well, he's having fun. Have you done this with every single one of your abilities? How, I was going to say, how much time <laughs> I have think you it's all spent abilities. Yeah, all doing abilities. that? Yep. Jesus. Yep. And That's she only point. has, what, a handful of powers. Mm -hmm. Cool. And we are going to see them over and over again. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. Okay. Uh... So yeah, so that's like that's like an option you could take. Like asking Farron would be a really really good way of getting at least the story version information. But books on that subject are not going to be easily found. Uh, and the books that are are probably like they might even be like first hand accounts, and those would not be reproduced, right? Those would be like studied by the scribes and scholars of the major cities, and perhaps only in the like collection of the emperor or major lords. Um, just because there's maybe like you know <clears throat> ten that have been written, um, but cool, awesome. Uh, excellent. So, uh, throughout the night, does anybody do anything else? Uh, Vi, do you do anything with your in information? Do you relay any information to anyone? Does anyone meet up with each other and hang out? Uh, I think sooner or later, um, Petrov is definitely going to want to touch base with Farron, so to speak. Yeah, I think that I think that towards the like it's probably like late in later into the night when Farron, when like you're done playing and you get your food, right? Because you eat after everyone else. You yeah. get your food, and then maybe you go sit down with them. Yeah. So I'll. Uh, hmm. I guess I'll still be maintaining my. Uh, River Traveler accent, as long as I'm in here. But I'm sure he used to the East, which Petrov switches accents when he needs to. Mm -hmm. um, but 
ask if uh, you've heard anything about the noble staying in town or about whatever this invention the dwarves have apparently come up with now that they're so proud of is. I, uh, most people are keeping their lips tight as well as hands deep in their pockets. It's not the most pleasant of places to be. Yeah. I know how you hate it when too many people keep their hands off you. Well, we should probably... I would like to find out who this noble might be. But, I could, uh... I could certainly ask around some of the more shadowy parts of town, if you'd like. Couldn't hurt, or anything about what the dwarves have come up with. Apparently it's causing quite a stir. I'm speaking in my normal voice only because I'm not totally sure what the appropriate riverboat accent is. If you want to give me a pointer on that, I'll be I think, happy to uh, I think it's probably a little bit, it. it's, it's, it's a little bit, it's a little bit gruff, um, a little bit more, like, sailor piratey speak. There's probably a bit of cursing <laughs> thrown into to each line. <laughs> Maybe not, maybe not the arg matey, but you know the like. The, I mean, it's a good thing you said that because you were about to get it. <laughs> it's it's no. more like the the underbite, like <laughs> well, back in my day, you know, this is what we did, and we just, it's a little bit maybe a little bit country in there because uh, it is river, you know, not Think, not ocean. Uh, Tom Sawyer, Huckabar- yeah, Huckabar- yeah, Tom Sawyer, Huckleberry Finn. There you go. You know, books don't have accents, right? Oh, I mean, that book! You read any I mean, of that out yeah. loud? It sounds exactly I, like. I, okay, I, fair I, enough. Fair enough. I read Come books on. and accents myself, so <laughs> maybe I'm just weird. I don't know. Well, you are weird, but. Well, I mean, if you know what the accent is, it's a lot easier. Yeah. No, no, no. I think I think maybe a little bit more country. Uh, a little bit. When in doubt, do Morgan Freeman. Or James Earl Jones. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> if I could do it, if if I knew how to do a really good um, oh shit, what's his name? Uh, shit. What is his name? Whose name? Remind me. Uh oh, if I could do a good Christopher Walken, that's what I would totally be doing right now. Yes, Christopher. Walken. <laughs> you think that I should be doing a Christopher Walken voice for these river <laughs> people? Is what you're doing, telling me? Yes. I think that's great. I think that's fantastic. All right. I think this is just going to be how the boat people communicate. Farron, I think we should find out more about this noble. I'm not sure what the dwarves have created, but it does seem to be causing some concern. I'd like to be kept abreast of this kind of information. Uh, You certainly like to get into character when you're traveling, don't you? <laughs> People share more with those they trust. <laughs> I well, I'll, seeing as there's no one throwing themselves at me, I'll probably stay up a bit and ask around. Cool. Uh, Vi, do you inter- introduce yourself into this conversation at all, or are you just hanging out outside? Or inside, or wherever you are. Um, I would probably go back to the dock. Okay. You and uh, you see, share. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so Chester, have you? Have you? Are you using the blanket now? Uh, I am. I okay. am like fully covered up by this yeah, oh, wonderful burlap. You see, burlap you see Chester blanket. with his hat over his face and blanket, you know, like laid over top of him, curled up against a grain sack or whatever that's sitting on the dock. Okay, so I would obviously sneak up on him, uh, and I would, obviously, and I would use um, my, uh, how do I, I never say this word right, right, and I, the type of magic where you can make little things happen. Press the digitation? No, it starts with a TH. Thank you. That... To um, very like light a fire to the um, blanket. Okay. Uh, Chester, obviously. And just sit and wait until he wakes up. I need to roll me perception, Chester. Okay. Oh, God. Uh, Remind me, uh, as far as 
I know, <laughs> Vi stayed on the boat, right? She kept the fact that she was going to town. Hidden yes, from you guys didn't mm-hmm. see me. That's yeah. correct. Um, although she was walking around, like, pretty pretty blatantly in the in the inn, but uh, I don't think you would have seen her. I think she's That's fair. astute uh, enough to, to avoid detection. Before turning in for the night, um, Petrov will head back to the boat just to make sure that everything's okay there and make sure that Fi and Chester are still there. Yeah, so, so Chester, um, you don't notice immediately until you feel some heat, like, on your leg, uh, and then maybe you wake up and the blanket is, like, burnt, maybe, like, a big chunk out of, like, the corner of it, uh, and that's when you when you wake up. So, uh, Chester's gonna do a little bit of the freaking out, say, oh, fuck, 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 this is hot, this is hot, <laughs> fucking die, yeah, sure. and, uh, he's gonna throw I'm... a blanket in the water. I'm sitting there cross-legged at the end of the dock, just, like, waiting for him to wake up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you throw the blanket in the water, and it pss, uh, and you, like, pat your, your trouser off, and it's got, like, a little burn hole in it. Uh, after a while, I see Vi, I'm like, uh, I, I go up to her, of course, and I'm like, you know, Vi, <sighs> that's not the first time you've woken me up with fire. What do you need? <laughs> and it won't be the last. Of course. And just this long, long sigh comes out of Chester. So now that you're awake, I have some information for you. Oh, this is fun. What is it? So, turns out, there's a noble in town. That's what all the hubbub is about. Mm Mm-hmm. Seems he's got a fancy device that all the town is uh, being kept secret. I like fancy devices. Uh, do we do we have plans? Are we about to make some plans? I think we could make some plans. Let's make some plans. This is going to be fun. Excellent. Uh, do you know which which inn he is at? Oh, I do. I just came from there. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, is. Is he on, like, an upper floor, or is he on the ground floor? Where do you think he is, Chester? Come on. Oh, God, he's making this easy for us? (laughs) No! (laughs) Easy for me? (laughs) Easy for you? No. Oh. Uh... Uh... All right. I'll I'll just go through the door. It's it's probably faster. I mean, you do what you want, but I think we need to come up with a slightly better plan than just walking through the front door. There's a lot of guards. Oh. It's it's that type of noble. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um uh, I'll go set up on the roof across from him and you can go and open his window and I'll <sighs> shoot him. Nice, nice I laugh simple. as if I haven't have already to. done that, but <laughs> I was like, well, I don't know if we want to kill him. You always uh, jump to killing. Uh, well, yeah, it's it's kind of what I do, but okay, okay, What what's your plan, Vi? You're better at the plans than I am. I mean, I like the idea of opening the window and you letting off a shot, but maybe just enough to scare him out of the room long enough. What if I go after his guard? Would that be okay? Yeah, I'd be okay with that. Okay. So okay. so this is this is the plan now? I think it's a solid plan. We can talk about it a little bit more on the way. Alright, let's go. Great. So am I going to find them on the dock or miss them entirely? I mean, I think that, as with all things RPG, you probably meet them as they're, like, heading off the boat, like, leaving the dock. You probably <laughs> see them, uh, <laughs> walking. In that direction. Ah, my friends, my Chester, you're choosing to uh, spend night out after all. Yeah, you know, it was a little boring around here. I know how yeah. bored you are on boat, I understand. <laughs> it is too so, bad you missed Farron's performances. It was very impressive. He has new song about princess. Ooh. Hmm. Well, I mean, maybe I'll catch it another time. I know you, Petrov, you probably were asking around. Did you find anything interesting yeah people play cards very close to chest in town even to people they think they trust i mean they they were perhaps right to not be trusting 
this is fair, but uh, they're they're staying closed mouthed. Interesting. Well, it seems like I've got a one up on you this time, Petrov. Really? Oh, and, and, she and why would you have that? You have been on boat all evening. What have you heard? I mean, what? I can hear all kinds of things from a boat. Or you, you have no, been bribing it's, it's... fish? <laughs> That's for me to know and you to never find out. Come, Chester, let's go. Let's go going. And Chester's <laughs> going to, you know, skip off merrily. <laughs> sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's just way too suspicious. Right, I'm yeah, going to no, follow that's them <laughs> attempting to remain <laughs> hidden. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I think that you could That's probably suspicious as shit. Hi, Jackson. He speaks. Yeah, I speak. Finally. Ow, fuck! <laughs> Welcome, Jackson. Ow! <laughs> yeah, right there? You okay? Are we all set? I hit my toe. Oh, huh, that's a shame. I hit my goddamn um, toe. Oh, your toe. Well, they said you beat your tongue. I'm more sorry. Um, no, I bumped my toe. Yeah, you can settle in Japan. Yeah. So, you're going to attempt to follow them in, in secrecy. Uh, shit. Uh, you can roll a stealth check, and, uh, I mean, they probably know you're going to follow them, but, uh, yeah, I think, I think, Petrov, you need to roll a stealth check, at least. Um. They can assume that I'm following them, but they might not know exactly where I am. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And... Oh, I do have inspiration. I may as well use that. Indeed. <laughs> God. That's a good inspiration roll. Ooh. Oh, that was a good time. Okay. So 28. So um, it's going to be real hard for you guys to know. Like, you have a suspicion that he might follow you, but um, you guys probably know that, like, Petrov's no slouch when it comes to sneaking around. Uh, and if he doesn't want to be seen, he probably won't be, just like you guys. Um, so you might have to work under the assumption that... Uh, that he may at least watch what's going on. Uh, uh, quick question. Can we assume we're back up to full health, or...? Uh, yeah, it's been a week. Everybody's back up to full health and full complement of everything. Mm. Okay. Awesome. Like to ask before I'm cheating, so you know. I know. <laughs> before I'm cheating. Yeah, it's fine. Alright, so, so I mean, I, so what's the I guess we're going plan here, by like, what, <laughs> like, you guys tried to come up with a plan and then you didn't. So I'm curious as to what you're actually going to try and do. Okay. What? what? <laughs> uh, I don't know. No. Um. So we would <laughs> we would go back <laughs> to the inn, mm -hmm. most likely. But I think the whole way, I Vi would know that. Petra was probably following them. So I think that she would speak very loudly about all of the uh, information that she found out. Sure. Just to, like, show off to Petra of how much she knows. Yeah. Yeah. Do you leave anything back or do you be like, yeah, there's this device and this guy's got it and we're going to, you know, we're going to try and get it, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, that's basically it. Not sure. super specific, just right. kind of general generalities. Um, yeah, yeah. You say like you you tell him like uh, like you maybe you're talking to Chester, right? And you say something along the lines of like, yeah, it's this thing. It looks mechanical. I've never seen anything like it before, but it's got to be worth something. Um, and yeah. Petrov, you would most likely overhear. I mean, you got a twenty eight. You could probably be like under their cloak, and they wouldn't know. <laughs> um, maybe he's under our cloak, and we do know. Right? Yeah. Okay. Or maybe, that, maybe that. Right. Um, <laughs> And so you hear, and I mean, I assume you as a player can put two and two together, right? About which uh, thing? Strange device, dwarf inside of this room with this noble. Oh yeah, they're noble obviously triangle. on their way to nope. uh, get their hands on it. Yeah, but you know... well, You have uh, additional information, <laughs> right? About... So you know that the dwarves, specifically, have been making 
working on something. Oh, yes, no. I, I, I have realized this device okay. is clearly the big thing that the dwarves are apparently shaking things up with. Yeah, absolutely. Or at least so, Petrov strongly suspects. Yep. So at any point, would you jump in yeah, and try to, or, like, yeah, say, yeah. like, hey, guys, this might not be a good idea, or are you just going to let us do it? Well, that's kind of what I'm wondering right now. Because <laughs> on the one hand, I mean, Petrov himself is curious and might want, not mind getting a look at it. On the other hand, he'd like not to cause any incidents with this terrifying device suddenly being stolen. On the other, other hand, he's not sure how much he would care if Vianchester got caught <laughs> trying to steal right. it. Right, that's the thing. So there are like, a lot of conflicting motivations here. <laughs> yeah, and like, particularly, like, do you do you express, like, the conversation that you overheard as well? Like, how clearly the dwarf is at odds and doesn't want whatever the no or the noble is at odds with the dwarf the dwarf wants it should thinks it should be you know like readily available and the noble says no that we can't do that you know it's it's against uh against what we should be doing yada 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 it's too dangerous i would say that i would say at this point <laughs> vi wants petra's like input i think that she doesn't know enough information about what the heck she found and so she's trying to do it in a way where she's looking smug as hell right. but like really does actually want him his help. So, like, that's the whole, like, what yeah, I'm trying yeah, to get yeah. at here. I, I like it. I like it, because you're like... <laughs> so, like, she's, like, spouting off, like, she knows all this information, but there's no way that she would know, like, any about, like, about any of this. She stayed in her city, I mean, you know? So she does want his input. She assumes he probably knows more than she does. Right, and also... So she's trying to gauge the situation a bit. And, and also, okay. he, he generally finds out information that you don't look for, like... Right, exactly. Who is this noble, and... How important is he, and should we actually steal from him? Yes, and, exactly. That's you know, exactly what she's saying. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so it's clear. It's clear to you, Petrov, that like as they travel, it's like they're definitely. If anyone's going to steal it, they're going to be the ones that are going to be able to pull it off. But there's the whole other side of the like the political side of the coin on this, right? Yeah. Where yeah. your input may be may be worthwhile. And we're, like, walking slowly, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? We're yeah. not, like, running off to do this thing. Yeah. Hmm. So, Petrov, do you tie yourselves to the thieves? I... <laughs> we're so, we're so if fine. I, given that I, I mean, if I can pick up on the fact that Vi is actually kind of hoping for... Uh, I think she's being input. pretty, like, if, yeah, if she's being pretty, if she didn't want you to hear this, like, yeah, yeah. she Megan, wouldn't be talking Megan the as a player doing. has determined that it's going to be obvious to you, therefore, Petrov yeah. understands what's going on here. Yeah, okay. Uh, I think just, just as part of their ongoing rivalry... Petrov wants them to squirm a little bit, so he's going to wait until <laughs> they ha it's the point where they're like, well, I guess we better break in here now. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, before he finally decides to step out from, I don't know, behind Vi. Yeah, so you get you get to, like, the street where, like, there's a good a good roof access for you, Chester, uh, and, and Vi's like, well, I guess you should get ready to shoot up on this Wait, roof Wait, I have a here. question. Would Chester, and this is to Ryan, Chester, would you have caught up or could that Vi was doing this? Or are you just totally like, yep, I'm going to go shoot this guy. Give me a minute. <laughs> like checking your crossbow so, as you walk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's... Uh, he He's not paying attention at all to what Vi's doing. He's <laughs> right, just checking exactly. his crossbow, <laughs> exactly. making sure the string is tight. Yep. You know, every little bit. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, mm-hmm, and then I shoot through the window. Mm-hmm, yep, yep. Mm -hmm. then, I, then I shoot him? Yep, okay, great. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, that's our relationship, it's fine. In, window, <laughs> simple plan. There's not a whole lot to do here. Right. We, get, get, we got this. It's get fine. object, sell for money. Got it. I'm on it. Let's do it. <laughs> so, uh, as you are preparing to make your completely illegal ascent, mm -hmm. uh, Petrov will appear... I mean, I, just because it's a halfling ability to hide behind human-sized people, I, I honestly do love the idea that he's hiding behind you. Sure, so yeah. Chester can see him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so Petrov just steps out from around behind your cloak and says, you may want to reconsider what you're doing here. Oh, God. <laughs> Vi turns around, clearly not incredibly surprised, obviously. And she goes... 
Oh yeah, why not? But then also like clearly relieved. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Also clearly like, oh thank god, maybe this is you know <laughs> Yeah. when he popped up, uh Chester's first reaction was to look at Vi and was like, That's a weird voice from you, Vi. I've never heard that one before. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it like snaps you out of your out of your your torpor, right? Like oh, like you're just God. you're just there like mm-hmm, yeah, and then you're like what the f-? like when when did you learn how to do that accent, Vi? I punched Chester in the arm for being so dumb. Ah, ah, that hurts. I love it. This dev- <clears throat> this device it's it's substantially more uh, valuable than you might realize and more controversial as well. Whoever you think you're stealing it from, I suspect has bring down a lot more trouble on your head than you think. And selling it for that matter, you uh, you could be sparking something much bigger than you want. You could be considered traitors for the Empire. This, de- this device the dwarves have made, it's making some serious waves. I can't. I'm sorry. Yeah, Arnold. <laughs> Great. That's fantastic. So, what do you what do you think we should do then? Don't get me wrong, I'm curious, but I'm not sure that leaping into this man's hotel room in the middle of the night is going to get you the results that you're hoping for. And what results do you think that th- those are? <laughs> that is either or. <laughs> well, from what I know of you, Chester, I'm assuming that you end up selling it for money, no matter what it is, so... Who said I would do this? It's a device we don't know about. Well, I've met you before. Oh, well, yeah, I'm, just so. saying, I've, I'm just saying, I've met you before. You, you're already pretty on, on board with killing people for money. But I never sold anything for explicit money. Without playing with it first. You have a very interesting moral code. <laughs> but it's a code. It's still there. It's a code we live by. Alright, let me... <clears throat> Dear God, that is hurting my throat. I was wondering how long you'd keep that up. Yeah. I am trying to make friends here. <laughs> Why, Chester, this noble, I am not sure his name. I have not seen him. No one is willing to speak of him. But these these dwarves, they are uh, they're causing concern in the Empire. They're saying this device could overthrow entire world on, as we under, know it. And, I mean, dwarves, they, they exaggerate. But uh, if this noble is traveling with dwarf, with this device, we do not know where they are taking it. Uh, this, this may not be something that you wish to... Uh, Meddle in. That said, mm. I would not mind taking a look at device. Me- meddling is kind of kind of my strong suit. I I kind of enjoy it, and uh, I- I'll make sure to let you see it before I hide it away forever. See, this is concern. <laughs> What? I see. Why? I, I see your concern, Petrov. But um, if I were to describe this noble to you, do you think that you could figure out who it is? I am well versed in imperial nobility. I could give shot. Did you see heraldry? I did, but I didn't recognize it. Well, describe. I describe what I saw. <laughs> yeah. And you've seen it. You've seen it recently enough that you would know. Um, so, uh, yeah, she describes what is, um, uh, roll me a history check. It's not going to be that hard, but it is a roll because she's describing it to you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no problem. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> she describes what sounds almost like exactly like the, uh, the nobility of Nuln, at least their her- heraldry. Um, more specifically, you know this, and, and maybe Vi, you, maybe you just don't know this because you're were restricted to kind of to one city. Um, but uh, you know that the heraldry uh, is run by uh, Count Kingsley Appleton. Um, that is that is who is the Count of Nuln. Uh, and 
that symbol, what she described, sounds exactly like what of him and his house uh, wear. So, almost ex like the highest of nobility in Nuln. Whether or not okay. who this person is may not be as easy to figure out, mm -hmm. but uh, the uh, the heraldry is most likely, or is like ninety nine point nine percent sure that's what it is. Right. Okay. So I'll I'll happily share that with uh, Vi. Now, question is: Are they heading to Nuln or from Nuln? If they're heading to Nuln, we may be able to meet them there. If they're heading from Nuln, eh. Uh, we we may be concerned about where they are taking this device. Seemed unclear from what I heard, unfortunately. Hmm. Uh, uh, Chester's going to step in here. And he's going to look at Viney and he says, What exactly did you hear, Vi? Were you not listening this entire trip? <laughs> I think he did not want to interrupt conversation between you and three where you thought I was. <laughs> exactly. Touche. Uh, insert info dump here about just about everything that she sure. heard. Yeah. Because yeah. at this point, I would definitely share everything. Yeah. Yeah, so you all know the conversation that occurred between the two um, about how the, the dwarf was clearly uh, against whatever was, was being done currently, but that uh, the nobility here was um, clearly uh, going to do it anyway. And and it's very clear the, that like, the thing are being done in question seems to be whether they're going to suppress this technology or not. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. that, that seems mm -hmm. to be the thing being done, but it's also clear that the group of these individuals is also traveling. So they are headed, like you said, suspected to or from somewhere, but also, knowing that if you've put two and two together, uh, this device probably is coming from Nuln mm -hmm. and going to somewhere else. Well, we are halfway between Nuln and Altdorf. And this is high-ranking nobility, so they don't just so leave for no reason. He, he may be on the way to see Emperor to discuss this technology. And uh, Emperor, Emperor is good man, but uh, if if see. this is question of weapon that could be used against chaos, uh, for for sake of Kislev, I think I need to understand what exactly is at stake. It seems doubtful they're heading for the Empire for him to use it as a weapon, just from what Vi has said about. Not well, to use as a weapon, to discuss. To demonstrate to Emperor and decide whether they will suppress or not. Hmm. Well, the noble seemed pretty set in his ways. He was not to use it. Hmm. This may take, be a correct choice. Take that or, for what it's worth. <laughs> th this may be wise choice or maybe overcautious. Concerns of people in Empire are not always concerns of people in the world at large. So, uh, you have... This This is your area of expertise, yes? Mm -hmm. Entering and leaving without being seen? Kind of my thing. So... Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps we see to it that we have some time alone with Mysterious Device. Indeed. I think this would be a great benefit of uh, some some playful time. I'm mm -hmm. Finally, something interesting to do. Well done. Uh, Far be it from me to steal thunder. Why? Where do we begin? Well, and she uh, points up at the window and says, uh, yeah, "Up 20, there. That's 20, where we begin." Twenty feet up at the third at the third floor <laughs> of the uh, structure. And remember, that's like twice as tall to Petrov. <laughs> Yep, sure is. Uh, so, what, we knock on the window and doorman lets us in? This this seems like only 30% mm, of plan. Mm, I think I might have an idea. Is, is idea murder? Idea <laughs> is not murder. For once. Well done! <laughs> I applaud myself sometimes. 
Vi, you said he's really well guarded, right? This is true. And you're very good at uh, taking things off of people that they don't want taken off them, correct? Yeah. So, what if I go up on that roof across from him and do the whole Morella thing that happened a couple days, or like a week ago? <laughs> I, I don't know, miss. Chester, are you as good a shot as he was? I mean, I, I don't have to hit him, I just need him <laughs> to run away. And then you can just kind of be at the indoor and bump into him, you know. The, and it's, it's good, it's fine. So, you shoot at room in inn. You bring guards down on your head, room is empty, we investigate. This is plan? This is plan. Clearly and, and mocking the way you speak. Vi needs to be <laughs> at the indoor so she can steal it from him because he's not going to leave it in the room. There's think, no way. I think borrow is the term we're going to use. I think we should not keep this. This seems something that should be returned once we take a look at it. As much as it pains me to say. Return to is him mysteri- or to me? This is the question. Uh, Chester, well. if device is mysterious as it sounds, no one will know what to pay for it anyway. I don't want to sell it. I, I told you, if it's a mysterious magical weapon, I'm going to play with this thing for a while. That is terrifying, and I will not allow it to happen. <laughs> well, then we'll see what happens when it happens. And Let's Chester just get our hands on the over. device first, and then we can decide, gentlemen, okay? Okay. Ideally, I would prefer if Noble did not know the device was taken. So... I think I'm with uh, Shorty on this one. So perhaps if, if he still, if he does take device with him, if you take device off him as he is leaving, perhaps we see to it that device is back in the room when he returns, yes? Yes. That's acceptable. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, this is... So far, this sounds like a pers- uh, two-person job. Surely I can assist somehow. You can search the room, just in case there's something else in there. It's not unreasonable. Or you and Vi can switch. Whatever you two decide. I'm going up on the roof. Uh, I feel that uh, Vi with vanishing trick will be superior uh, pickpocket. So, do you want the door or the window? Uh, you look up again at the window <laughs> three stories up. <laughs> this is not... Mm, hmm. Because here's the thing. He leaves it in the room. I will get it. I'll go up through the window. If he doesn't leave it in the room, somebody needs to be down here in order to snag it from him on his way out. I can't be in two places at once. I am great, but I'm not that good. <laughs> You, is, you are the smaller one. You can just kind of... They can just walk by you. You never know. And in this world, all halflings are thieves, so... <laughs> <laughs> that that just might draw more attention to me. That's true. <laughs> Milo no, I think... somewhere is cursing your name. <laughs> Milo, who the last time we saw him stole a book of deadly right, psionic yeah, magic. The last time we saw him <laughs> stole a Fair book point. of illegal magic. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> No, I I think I think this is uh, this is area which I am best equipped for. Uh, and Petrov kicks off his boots, leaving him in the slippers that he wears underneath, and begins walking up the wall. Yeah, absolutely. Just oh, Chester's just gonna stare dumbfounded at this. <laughs> yep. Vi as well, but uh, I, hey. More power it's to him. Take you. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. So yeah. there's this moment where like he just starts walking up the wall, no problem. Uh, and and the two of you look at each other, and then you look up again, and then you look back at each other. And then uh I yeah. expect my boots to still be there when I get back, Chester. <laughs> Only the left one. And then Chester will start climbing the opposite building. Sure, yeah, you start scaling the opposite building. Much less uh much less uh, adept at it than, than simply just walking up the side of the wall. Yeah. But yeah, that's